There are many possible ways to achieve greatness. A person might make an impressive technological discovery or compose a beautiful symphony. Another might conquer vast stretches of land to build a mighty empire. But this video is about a woman who became great simply by being extremely patient and refusing to do what was expected of her. A woman who refused to buckle under enormous pressure. Let me share with you the story of this amazing woman. Our story starts in September 1960. This is Frances Oldham Kelsey, a Canadian-American. She's 46 years old and has just begun a job at the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. Since she is a newcomer to the agency, her bosses have given her what should be a simple assignment. She has been asked to check the safety of a sleeping pill called Kevadon. In her boss's words, there should be no problems with the sleeping pills. The FDA headquarters are uncomfortable and cramped. But Kelsey soon gets to work on the application without any complaints. The company seeking to introduce Kevadon to the US market is called Richardson Merrell. They have submitted many reports about the drug, and from these documents, it seems like a miracle drug. Not only is it a sleeping pill, but it can also cure coughs, colds, headaches, and morning sickness. But Dr. Frances Oldham Kelsey looks through these reports with a skeptical eye. She notices that many of the company's claims lack scientific evidence. The other two scientists working on the Kevadon application agree with her opinion, and they tell the company that they will have to produce proof on the drug's safety. The company agrees and submits more evidence to the FDA, but Dr. Kelsey is still not satisfied and refuses to approve the drug. One evening in late 1960, Dr. Kelsey is in her office when she receives a call from the salesman from Richardson Morell. We need to get this drug on the market before Christmas, he tells her bluntly, because that's when our best sales are. Apparently Christmas isn't just the season of mistletoe and mince pies, but sedatives and hypnotic drugs as well. Despite the pressure, Dr. Kelsey refuses to speed up the process. One reason for Dr. Kelsey's reluctance to approve the drug is because she had experience with new drugs that were extremely harmful. 23 years previously, a medicine called Elixir of Sulfanilamide had led to disaster. The drug called sulfanilamide was already used to treat pneumonia and some other infections, but the pills were very hard to swallow and tested disgustingly bitter, like the kind of sweets your grandma might give you. So an American company decided to turn the medicine into a liquid product. They did this by dissolving it in something called a solvent along with some pink coloring and artificial cherry flavoring. But, the company made the fateful decision to use a chemical called diethylene glycol in the process, so it could be made more cheaply. The elixir of sulfanilamide was prescribed by hundreds of doctors to their patients, but suddenly, those patients began to drop dead. One doctor recorded his terrible pain at accidentally killing one of his patients with the drugs. He wrote, Nobody but Almighty God can know what I have been through these past few days. To realize that six human beings, all of them my patients, one of them even my best friend are dead, because they took that medicine that I prescribed for them innocently. And to realize that that medicine, which I had used for years in such cases, had become a deadly poison in its newest and most modern form, as recommended by a great and reputable pharmaceutical firm in Tennessee. Well, that realization has given me such days and nights of mental and spiritual agony, as I did not believe a human being could undergo and survive. I have known hours when death for me would be a welcome relief from this agony. Dr. Kelsey was asked to help investigate which part of the drug was causing the deaths, so she got together some lab rats and divided them into three groups. She gave each of the groups either sulfanilamide alone, sulfanilamide with diethylene glycol, or diethylene glycol alone. It soon became obvious that the diethylene glycol was the problem, because the rats fed either that chemical alone or with the sulfanilamide died very painful deaths. So you can see why Dr. Kelsey was worried when another company came along promising a miracle cure without giving enough good evidence. It's now February 1961 and Dr. Kelsey is still refusing to approve the drug Kevadon because of the lack of strong enough evidence of its safety. Perhaps you're wondering, if all of this happened 60 years ago, why have I never heard of this drug Kevadon? Well, maybe you'll recognize it when I tell you its other name, Thalidomide. That's right, Thalidomide. This story takes a surprising turn when Dr. Kelsey is reading a medical journal one night, while her husband watches the TV. With a jolt, 
she notices the word thalidomide in the journal, the name of that very drug that has been giving her so much trouble. The word is in a letter to the editor from a doctor who says that four of his patients taking thalidomide developed very painful and numb hands and feet, which did not go away after they stopped taking the drug. When she reads this, Dr. Kelsey is shocked, but a tiny part of her also feels vindicated. She realizes that she was right to not approve the drug. A few weeks later, Dr. Kelsey meets with Dr. Mire, who is her main contact at Merrill. She confronts him about the study, accusing him of trying to keep it a secret from the FDA. After the meeting, Dr. Mire goes on a trip to Germany to talk to German doctors who had experience prescribing thalidomide and returns with a report claiming that the numbness reported in the medical journal might just be due to a vitamin deficiency. Needless to say, Dr. Kelsey isn't impressed. In April 1961, Merrill sends a sales and marketing team to the FDA to try to charm them into approving thalidomide. Dr. Kelsey notices that they don't offer much scientific evidence, but instead use clever slogans and stories. For example, they keep saying that if Marilyn Monroe had tried to commit suicide with thalidomide, she would still be alive. Hey, leave poor Marilyn out of this. Dr. Francis Oldham Kelsey ignores these silly comments. Dr. Mire, angry that Dr. Kelsey still refuses to give him what he wants, complains to William Kessenich, the medical director of the FDA. But Kessenich had recruited Dr. Kelsey personally, and he backs her up, saying that anything she says should be considered the FDA's official position. In September 1961, a year after the new drug application for thalidomide, a conference is arranged between the FDA and Merrill. During the conference, Dr. Kelsey overhears many angry comments from bald or bearded scientists about the FDA trying to impede scientific progress, but she stays calm under the pressure. On the second day, there is a panel about thalidomide and Dr. Kelsey and her colleagues grill Dr. Murray and the other Merrill chemists about the drug safety. During that panel, Dr. Kelsey asks the crucial question, is thalidomide safe in pregnancy? The chemists shuffle their notes, but it's obvious they don't have an answer. Finally, Dr. Murray confidently says that if there are any problems with thalidomide in pregnancy, they would already know about it because the drug has already been used widely in Europe. But Dr. Kelsey is not so sure. Around this time, doctors had begun to realize that drugs might be safe for a pregnant woman, but very dangerous for the child she carries. This is because the drugs can affect fetuses differently to a full-grown person. Since Merrill cannot prove that thalidomide is safe in pregnancy, Dr. Kelsey still refuses to allow the company to market the drug. Now for another amazing turn on events. On the 30th of November, 1961, Dr. Kelsey suddenly receives a call from Dr. Mure, telling her that the company which sells thalidomide in Germany is taking the drug off the market. This is because a German doctor called Wittekline Lenz has gathered conclusive proof that thalidomide is responsible for causing birth defects in German children. You know that kind of thing, right? You've seen the famous photos of the birth defects caused in Europe by thalidomide. The children without arms or legs? These photos are too sensitive to show here, but if you're interested and you don't mind seeing very shocking images, just google thalidomide babies. Dr. Francis Oldham Kelsey is amazed by this news. But she thanks Dr. Mire calmly and hangs up the phone. The little mite causing birth defects. She was right all along. Richardson Merrill drags its feet for a while, hoping that Widukind's lens evidence will be discredited. But the opposite happens. Even more evidence starts to pile up, showing that the drug is horribly dangerous for fetuses. On March 8, 1962, Merrill finally calls up Dr. Kelsey again and tells her that they are withdrawing the application to sell thalidomide in the US. Just imagine if Dr. Kelsey had approved the drug a few months after the application because of the pressure the company had put on her. The drug would have been given to thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of pregnant American women, causing the greatest number of American birth defects in history. Because of Dr. Kelsey's patience and refusal to bend under pressure, all those babies grew up to lead healthy lives and many are still alive today. Not many people find out about Dr. Kelsey's intelligence and bravery until July 1962, when the Washington Post prints a front page headline calling her the heroine of the FDA. In August of that year, President John F. Kennedy invites her to the White House to receive the President's Award for Distinguished Federal Civilian Service, the highest honor that the President can give to civilian employees of the federal government. 
Dr. Kelsey goes on to work for the FDA for many years, being given countless awards and honors. Here's an interesting fact. A robber once broke into Dr. Kelsey's house and stole many of her prized possessions, but he didn't steal the president's award, probably because he didn't know that it was worth anything. I'm very happy to tell you that Dr. Kelsey went on to lead a long and happy life. On the 6th of August, 2015, she was presented with the Order of Canada, which is that country's highest civilian honor. She died less than 24 hours later, at the impressive age of 101. Who are the heroes that inspire you to be the best you can be? Elon Musk with his amazing inventions? Or a local woman who cares for her disabled son? There are so many ways to achieve greatness. Which will your way be? Share your thoughts in the comments down below, and don't forget to subscribe for more fascinating true stories and amazing facts.